Uh, my name is Binta Fati. I am originally from the Gambia, uh, West Africa. It's a very small country. <laughs> yeah, so um, I often used to say my voice, my power, because having been through female genital mutilation or female genital cutting, child, false and early marriage, I have gained an experience that gave me strength to protect the little girls and to tell my story in a way that I could able to help and motivate others. I'm a change agent. I work with uh, TEDFM, Teresa de Femme. It's a German non-governmental organization that uh, fight for women's rights. Mm -hmm. And there we are working under the EU level. Because the problem is that when immigrants or migrants or foreigners, I don't know how to classify, mm -hmm. but when they move their original country, there are some of the traditional practice, especially uh, that are very harmful, they want to come with them. And they want to practice such traditional practice also in the country where they live. So by working with ZFM, we work closely with our communities, how we can prevent such traditional practice happening also here, mm -hmm. especially in the European soil. Of course, I, I, uh, I go back to my country because the problem is there. They bring the problem with them to Europe. Then to eradicate all this, we have to start at home. Charity begins at home. That's why I always go home, because that's where the problem is. And to advocate about education and awareness. I personally ad advocate more about girls' right for education. Because imagine that when I was uh, 14 years old, I was married off as a child. If I do not continue my school, what, would, what might happen? But I said by then, because I wanted to be someone, I wanted to be independent, I wanted to be my own boss, I wanted to have a voice, I wanted to own a land. I want to say yes in the family, because women in my society are taught not to say anything. We obey, but we don't ask questions. So I wanted to ask questions. Why are we supposed to live like that? We are a new generation. We have to take things with our own hands. And that was the time I said, no, I will not be like any other girl. I want to be different. And by being different, it means you become an outcast in your own society because you wanted to be someone. And that was the time I said, no, I have to go back to school. Even being pregnant and I was married, I still was going to school. When I gave birth, my son was two months old, I started going back to school because I did not want to call a dropout. I did not want to be called a woman or a, fish or a, a, a girl who has not completed her school just because I was married off when I was 14. Well, in reality, my parents were also against, but I was lucky. I came from a family that we are very noble, very religious, and we have imams. I don't know if you know about imams uh, from my family. And that means that a leader, a one who is leading, have the voice. They decided. They decided. That how my family was. My parents could not say anything because it's like hierarchy, the one on top this side. So when I came home from school and then my auntie told me that I was married, I asked my mother. She said, I don't know. And the same thing to my father, they don't know. But just because that was happening in my family. And of course, when I was a little girl, I, ha I look upon others. Because I wanted to be an ambassador by then. I always like, wow, they are doing cool job, nice job. And then the way they travel. So those were kind of the, 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 the uh, I see myself in Fisher in such level of uh, society that I wanted to be someone. And by being that, I have to start doing something. I have to be different. And then, of course, I know that there are also a lot of women and girls who wanted to be different, but sometimes they lack the motivation. They lack, they lack someone that pulls them. I was lucky that my mother was there for me. Okay. She was my hero. When I, tell her, I told her that I wanted to go back to school, she said, of course, 
bring your child here and then you can continue going to school. So that's how I yeah. succeed. My story sounds similar, but it's always different somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, because it was one family. And then that demand I was married of live in the uh, diaspora community. He came from abroad. So he went to the Gambia for vacation. And that was the time they said, ah, I could be married off. And then sometimes I even think about it, that if you live here, you're supposed to have different mentality. But of, un, uh, unfortunately, mine was not this, that, uh, the same case. But of course, he came there for only three months, and we lived together, and then he left. So you haven't uh, lived together? After, no, after, after three months. So after we were together for only three months, and after that, I was living alone. That was the time I was pregnant, then I decided to continue, and then I moved to my mother's house, and then she was helping me still now. My son is with my mother. Uh, well, when I was in the Gambia, then I got opportunity that I could uh, further my studies abroad. It was funny because I thought I was going to Holland. <laughs> but it was ho Poland and it's Holland. So when I went to buy a ticket, I was excited, like, I'm going to Amsterdam. And then they told me, no, you are going to Warsaw. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, and so I start checking. I was a bit like, wow, Warsaw. I then start checking, which, where is Warsaw? Because I, I did not know. I know only Holland. No, I'd never heard of Poland by mm -hmm. then in the Gambia. So, of course, when I realized that, ah, it's next to Germany, I said, hmm, maybe if something went wrong, I could escape, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I moved to Poland, that was 2009, December, and then I studied uh, economics, in uh, BA in economics, bachelor degree. So after economics, then that was the time I was engaged with a lot of foreigners in Poland, few of the foreigners that are, that are there, because in Poland, it's difficult to find a lot of foreigners mm -hmm. when I was living there. So I then came to know uh, there is a guy, I forget his name, but he have a foundation called Somali Foundation. And then accidentally, I went there to ask them. I said, sorry, I'm not from Somalia. I'm from the Gambia, but I would like to know. They said, no, the name is only Somalia, but the foundation is for everyone. I said, okay. So then I did some project with them. And then that was the time I realized that there are a lot of violence against women and girls in where I come from. But actually, I did not know they exist. exist. So that was the time I was more interested about women's rights. Then I start telling them my story. I started telling them, I have a son. My son was by then not 15, yeah? And then it was the first time I started telling my story that was in Poland. Because I said, maybe since I knew what happened in my life was violence against women, it, it was uh, they, they abused my right. Maybe these people could help me. I could learn more. So that was the time I then I engaged more about human rights. Then I did few uh, trainings. Then I know some of the things which happened to me were viola violation of my rights. Then I said to myself, I will go back to my country because most of the things which were happening. Not many people knew that these are completely violations so against you women. Know what had happened to you, you also no. that was normal. It was just done to everyone and uh, exactly. Just a standard. I yeah. thought it was just a standard thing. It was just part of us. It is a culture. It is a religion. Mm -hmm. It is what uh, my my parents knew, and then they taught me. So it means they they were doing something right for me. Mm -hmm. But after when I realized that, I come to another part of the world that they don't even know what is it. And then as a woman, and they are women, so I asked them, really? They said, no. Then I started asking questions. That was the time I said, okay, I have to go back. I gathered the little experience I gathered here with the knowledge. I'm going to go back to my country, to my community, and face them, and tell them some of the things we are doing we thought is good for us, actually is killing. Most of the time, why these people are doing such traditional practice, it's just because, according to the social norms, they are doing it to satisfy men. That's the basic uh, thing about it. Because they want to control women's sexual feeling. 
And because if you have a daughter who is not circumcised, no, no man will marry her. And those are the social pressures most of the time that women think they have to court their daughters. Or family, society think. Sometimes men decide even that their daughters must be caught. And then also, if you are not caught, you are not clean, you are outcast. I remember that when I was in primary school, we had a, a friend, and then there was this big uh, uh, FGM ceremony. And then I was there with her, but they told her not to go, not to come in because she was not caught. But we, as a child, we, I was like, but why? Why you cannot come in? But the old people said, no, 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 you cannot come in. She's not clean. Mm -hmm. Then we went inside to see the other girls. So I remember that, ah, now I understand why our mothers are also very scared of such impression that anywhere we wanted to go to, they will say no, because we are that, because we are not clean. And then how the society also judges if you have a daughter who is never caught. So that's why the people, most of the time, they are doing it. So what I do is that when I went to Gambia, I go to schools. I target the age I was married of. Because for me, all these things, what I'm doing, they all touch me. FGM, child and forced marriage. So I cannot be campaigning, adv advocating for one to be stopped without the other. And I found out that for all these harmful traditional practice to be stopped, we have to target one thing, that is education. If people are educated, they, think, they see things in a different way. So I always go to the age I was married. That was in grade, uh, eight grades in German, in Grunzula, I think that. And then I go there, I give speeches. So I tell them my own story and why I am standing in front of them today. Just because I never gave up in education. Because what I have seen is that in the Gambia, most of the girls, they gave hope. They gave up so easily. Because they think, I will be married off soon. Why will I continue going to school? Why will I put effort in my education? So those are the thoughts that I want them to think in a different way, that they should be proud of themselves. And they should be proud that they are in the school. And they should be proud that they want to be, they should be someone in the future. They should be leaders. In the Gambia, we need also women in politics. We need women that own businesses. We need women that can be in the army. We need women that can own their own land, compound. But most of the things are owned by men. Because the way society put women in one circle that at the end we belong to a man that we are married of, then you don't have to create opportunities or things for yourself in the future. So what I do is that after going to school for advocating, I always say charity begins at home. I first start in my own small community. I spoke with my mother. I explained to her what I'm doing. First time, she told me, no, 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 don't use that word. Because when you use the word, it's become very taboo. It becomes sensitive to the people. I said to her, but I, I cannot fake the word. That's the reality. She said, I should use sunnah. Oh, so you shouldn't use the English word. Yeah, ah, okay. uh, English word, and then in my language also. Mm -hmm. So she said, when I said sunnah, sunnah means it's a practice which is uh, practiced by prophet, peace be upon him. So it, it's more civilized way to say it. Then I said, okay, then I use it. And I said, okay, we have to talk about this thing. I saw her, all what I have been doing here. And I saw her, the side effect of those who have been affected by it. And then she understand little by little. She told me, I did not know that. This is what, it, this, the, that's what was happening, or this is what could happen after doing that. And then she invited few ladies surrounding. And then those ladies came also. I spoke with them. They told me, the way we do it in the game is different. I said, no, it doesn't matter. Different or not different. You don't have to touch someone's body. You don't have to cut anything off. It does not matter if it is type one, type two, or type three. Just stop. Then we talk in a way that they understand me, and then it's not forced. You cannot force them. These people have been using, doing this for ages. You cannot come one day and then talk to them to stop it. There should be a mean, because they, some, they use it to generate income. And then if you, some is their job and you want them to stop that, you also have to give them something that they could do. 
Then I said, okay, then I talk more about education. I said, okay, you know what? We have to educate our girls. And they, they were very excited that, yeah, this, we even use you as an example. If our daughters are doing something, we said, you don't see Binta? She was married off, she was that, but she still continued going to school. And now look at her. So I said, yeah, so that's what the, the, the target supposed to be. So we, uh, from here, I start bringing fruits because I have a thought. How could I bring my community together? that they could do something. Then I want to be different, like always. I was always different from whatever happened in my life. Then I start thinking that maybe, since in Germany we have a lot of exotic fruits, and then when I'm talking with my mother, and I always tell her about strawberries, and she asks me a lot of questions. Maybe if I could take some seeds from here, and then take it to my community, and then let us grow it and see how it will look like. And then by doing that, we bring the topic of gender equality, education, how we can eradicate FGM, child and forced marriage. So that's what I did. And it works. Because, it now. yes, because <laughs> <laughs> I see that to bring my community together, I have to do one thing. I have to bring food. And then it's not just because they are hungry that they don't have food. No, but I, ha I want to bring something that will be like excitement for them that I tell them, look, this is strawberry. Even when I was going, I took some sample for them to try how it feel, how it tastes, it's sweet. We cannot afford to buy them in the supermarket. They are very expensive. But if we could grow in our own garden, that we, every evening, women come together, then we sit, we water them, we are looking at them, we like to remove the, the weeds from, from it. We could talk a lot by doing that. And when the strawberries are ripe, I said, we can do something. I'm not, exp I'm not good in baking cakes, <laughs> but I could ask someone that will be interested to come and join us, to show us how we could make strawberry cake, not only eating it, and we can make strawberry jams. And then I think, what about an idea if we could use our own strawberries, the one we cultivated, and the, fruit, the fruits which are, own, which are originally from the Gambia, for example, mango, we can mix together and make strawberry mango jam. And then so they were like, wow, that can be possible. I said, yes, it can be possible. So I know them. I feel their pain and I see in their eyes. I don't want to bring something that can add up to what they are already facing. So by bringing this idea, I see the joy in their eyes and I see the excitement. And now everyone is waiting for the strawberries. <laughs> so when the strawberries are done, then we will think about more because I told them that we could offer more. I could offer more especially when we will use the same thing, that we could sell it, make something out of it, and then sell it and generate that income to support our daughters, to pay school fees for them. Because in the Gambia, sometimes someone wants to go to school, but they don't have the money to pay for their education. But if I told these women, by doing this, we can have something that we can use. And then these things that we will use, we can add up. These are just samples, mm. but there's more in Germany that I can bring. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you call it strawberry exotic because for us exotic fruits are of course mango. Yes. Yeah, it's the other way around. So you can see yeah. by us it's like strawberry, yeah, yeah. blueberries, blackberries and even apple. apple yeah. So we don't have them and mm. I think that we could cultivate them. We yeah. could try, Quite you know. Fun, yeah. yeah, I said let's try it and we are in the trying process. Yeah. I'm doing right now more in a personal mm. level because I am passionate about it mm. and because I was there, I know how it feels. Yeah. Now I have a little daughter. When I look at her, I don't want all those what went through for her to go the same thing. So that gave me the motivation that I have to go home. I have to teach my community how they could be different, how they could say no to FGM and force and child marriage how they could advocate to empower their girls. Because I see without education, we cannot be, we cannot be successful. It's the key of success. Mm. And then by doing that, if women are educated, I said, we can change. Because we don't even think about wars or something different. We think about basic things, human rights for us, just few things we want to have. And those are the things that you want on your own property, you want to have a say in the family, we, don't, we are tired for, uh, all the time for someone to decide, on, to decide for us. So we need a voice. So this is the voice that 
we have to create so that we can speak up and then more women can also speak up because we all have right to do certain things. And then, so this is what I basically, when I go to Gambia, I do. And then by doing that, I want to establish an organization, yeah. which I have started, uh, a platform on social media, I have it, and uh, it's called Women Decided. Because I think now as a woman, I have decided to protect my little daughter. And I want to use the same uh, to implement and then give education awareness. And then how we can eradicate female genital mutilation, forced child marriage, violence against women and girls. In Gambia, I know that there are a few ladies who are also advocating for um, uh, female genital mutilation, child marriage and forced marriage. But then, I am not 100% sure if there is a big movement, which we as Gambian women do this. What I know is that we are all doing in personal level and some are working with great organizations that they get help and support to do it. But I was also thinking that if we could, as a woman, I often say, we come together. Because when we come together, we are stronger. Mm -hmm. And then we can advocate more. Yeah. So it's a power that when we come together, then we get. And then by doing that, we advocate for more of equality, eradication of uh, violence that most of us are affected by. But I'm not sure if we have it already. So the prize I got from the African Women in Europe uh, is a prize that uh, people nominated me for, that I'm doing a great job in my community, that either here in, 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 uh, in Gambia, in Berlin, I organized almost three event demonstrations. One was um, about violence against women and girls uh, in um, Alexander Platz with my till uh, Brandon Brugator. And then second one I did was also in the 6th of February, International Day Against Female Genital Mutilation also, which I organized. I mobilized people. We have to go out and say no. And it's even happening in Europe. Because sometimes people say, ah, it's African, ah. it's like it's African problem. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's not. Mm -hmm. FGM is happening in Europe. It's happening in Middle East. It's happening in Asia. But then what the media shows that it's African problem, mm -hmm. then by doing that, they say, it's not. This is a problem which is affecting women and girls. Let's come together as a woman and fight for our rights. So by doing that and then going to Gambia, representing, doing some work, I'm everywhere. And then they, that was when I received an email that I have been nominated for that. So I went to the Netherlands. I was in the Gambia for six days. I just came Thursday on Friday. I traveled to Netherlands. Well, in the Gambia, so it was more about the project. And then I, a few interviews, which I, I, I did. So I came, it was more for the community of uh, working as a community in the non-governmental mm -hmm. department. So they gave me an award for my outstanding that I'm trying to put my, not trying, but I'm doing efforts to give back what I have learned, experience to my community and how I could help also. And then to tell my story in a way that I'm motivating people. People look up, on, uh, look up to me. Many people write to me that I'm giving, I'm motivating them. They will never give up on their education. The way they think before that they will get married off now, they have like knew that they want to be part of politics. They want to speak mm -hmm. up. So it's a, it's a feeling that I really enjoy. Yeah. And then I will never stop until I see that all the women are happy and then we don't have any more problems. And on the, I forget the date, also we are organizing a um, demo in Berlin here with uh, one lady, she's Fadumo Musa. She's from uh, Somalia also, so it's more about um, uh, sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. we also, we work together with different uh, women, uh, with different organizations, grassroots, uh, and everyone personally, which I see that we are all fighting for the same thing yeah. about women's rights. We just want simple basic rights. Then, of course, I work with them and then how we could help each other. <laughs>